Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Gene Stealer Cult video. So before we get into today's video, as per tradition, I'd like to say a big thank you to Gavin Kaisback. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly, for sending in some awesome pictures of his Gene Stealer Cult. Absolutely love the purple and orange paint scheme. It really, really pops on the models. Works really well. Really like the basing you've gone for as well with the sort of mini cactuses on the bases. Absolutely fantastic. So thank you, Gavin, for sending in uh, these pictures. Really, really good. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want to send in for me to use, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. So without further ado, let's take a look at today's video. Uh, just, to, just a heads up, I know we've been focusing a lot on the Imperial Guard recently. Um, and I am doing a lot more guard stuff, and that is going to be my main focus. But I do like to do the occasional Gene Stiller Cult video because we do. I do have a, a little sort of niche of Gene Stiller Cult followers. So you know, I don't, and I want that. I still want to be able to put some good videos out for them as well. So without further ado, we're going to be looking at what is my current Gene Stiller Cult competitive list. Okay. Now uh, I've been using. The, I've been fine-tuning this list for a few months now, and I think it's very, very powerful. I want to say straight off the bat, this is a pure Gene Stiller cult list. This is not a soup of Imperial Guard, cult, and Tyranids. I know there's a lot of cult players out there which have been using that and have been finding it very useful, but this is a pure Gene Stiller cult army. Okay, and This is what I have found to be very powerful. And effective, it can take on some of the top tier lists. Okay, so and it stands, you know, as I know a lot of pure lists don't do great in the top two tables, but this can go toe to toe with some of the big boys out there. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the list. So, it's three battalions, and that if I uh, I will try and put a link down in the description below to the uh, to the list, guys. So, um, but yeah, I will talk through it now. It's three battalions which gives me 18 command points in total. And that's very important because this list is a thirsty beast. It loves command points. In fact, in the way I've been running it recently, there's a sort of 100 points you can play around with to give the list some flavor. But with the, the way I've been running it, up to 16 com of those 18 command points are already spoken for. So it gives you an idea. The sort of stratagems I'm going to be, you know, how stratagem intensive this is. I've already planned for probably 16 command points. So let's go through the first battalion. So the first detachment is a cult of the four armed emperor battalion, and this contains all my close combat stuff. And this is stuff you will traditionally see in a uh, G to look cool list. So the three troop choices are we have a five man squad of acolytes with no upgrades. Okay. They're purely there as a 35 point detachment filler. And what I use these guys for is for two things either as an extra few bodies to, uh, to, to in the in the mass assault or because they are the cheapest troop choice, I can cut ambush them, sort of turn three, far back corner in my opponent's deployment zone, out of out of line of sight, and I can just use them as a 35 point way of getting line breaker. So quite good. They're either no, because they have three attacks each, these guys. It's either an extra 15 attacks, 10 rending claw, five calls this knife. Or they're an or they're an extra line breaker point. So nice little they're not a tax unit, they're just a cheap, effective unit. The next uh, troop choice is another five-man acolyte squad, and these guys have uh, two rock saws. The leader has a lash whip and bone sword, and because I had ten points, I also gave them a cult icon. Now you might think that's a lot of upgrades for a five-man squad, but you'll see how you'll sort of see how it works. And I have found that it actually it's it's a nasty little unit, and what again what I use this for is is a bully is a bully squad, okay. So either I did experiment with having like one saw in each one of the five man units, but I decided it's best to have uh, to have a, a small five man because it can it can deep strike in some 
so that it can un it can call ambush in some sort of smaller gaps that some of the bigger units can't. And it's still, because it's called the Forearmed Emperor and I combine it with the Clam of Us, which is later in the list, it's a 7 inch charge. So more often than not, it actually does make its charge in. And if it doesn't, then it can form part of a second wave and it's still a bit of a threat. Or it can be used as a bully squad. Because what I've found is te five bare bone acolytes can struggle to sort of, to kill a sort of a devastator squad holding an objective, for example. But if you add those couple of rock saws in, it adds a bit more punch. You've got the real ones. Bit more flexibility. Now, the main troop squad is an acolyte bod, uh, uh, bomb. This is the third troop choice. This is 15 acolytes with a cult icon for real ones in close combat, a leader with a lash whip and bone sword, and six rock swords. The remaining people have rending claw and cultist knife. Now, I know a lot of you will be saying, why not take a 20 man squad. Okay. Two reasons. One, uh, and probably the most important reason is it's huge overkill. It's huge overkill. I um I really have found that 20 acolytes is is just it just it does kill anything, but or it, it kills anything and you don't you don't need half the attacks. Honestly, 15 is a sweet spot. Always kills whatever I send it in against. And it does tend to mean that every model actually does get to do something. And the second uh, uh, second reason is, is that if the cult ambush goes wrong, if my you know a perfect ambush stratagem fails, then it's not as many points down the crapper. Essentially, it's a balance. So... Um, they're the three troop choices. The elite section, I just have a Clamavus in there. And I also have a unit of 10 Aberrants. Now, Aberrants are very, very good. There's a reason I take a squad of 10. Okay, I want to have two Hypermorphs in there. For every five models you can take in an Aberrant squad, you can take a Hypermorph, which is the equivalent of a Sergeant. Very unique. Not a lot of people know that. A lot of people, t I've seen them take 10-man squads and just take the one Hypermorph. You can take two in the 10-man squad. And they both have heavy improvised weapons. And there's also two power hammers in the squad and there's six power picks. Now, to explain that squad, I know there's a lot of people that would say, why do you even bother with the power hammers? Why do you bother with them at all? Well, I'll tell you, sometimes you just need that flat damage three. You really, I cannot tell you the amount of times when if I just had all picks and when I have run just all picks, that they've just not quite had the punch. Especially because I'm running Cult the Forearmed Emperor and I'm not running Twisted Helix. I need to have that extra absolute walloper unit. So uh, the two power hammers do that very well and then the, the hypermorphs with their... Uh, weapons as well their strength times two the heavy impressed weapons they're good but they're only ap minus one and they're only a, and the, but they are good flat two damage but the ap minus one it does mean that most of the things you're targeting with these things like knights still get a four up save against it which means a lot of your damage is is stopped whereas the power hammer it's ap minus three flat three damage it just knocks knights off the feet the picks are also fantastic because you get for every attack you make with a power pick you get to make an attack with a rending claw and that just means there's a, a lot of attacks coming from that squad. A lot of attacks. Now, uh, finally, in that detachment, uh, leading the detachment, I have a Primus to give everyone plus one to hit and to get reward ones against a big target. And I also have an Acolyte Icon Ward. And he has the first of two relics in my army, which is the... Cult icon of the uh, the cult ascendant. It's the banner which gives you plus one strength, flat plus one strength. Very powerful. It means my acolytes are strength five, which means the rock swords are strength ten, which means the winning things like knights on threes. It means the um, the aberrants are strength six base, which means they're wounding a lot of infantry on twos 
Uh, and the, they're wounding, like, again, they're wounding knights with the big thing on threes. Now, what I also tend to do with both of those units is I... Uh, with both the Acolytes and the Aberrants is I will drop the Acolytes in on the second turn when there still might be some chaff. Uh, but I, I want to deliver a really hard hammerfall blow. So I do that with the Acolytes. They go in, they get, I put uh, my From Beyond on them, so suddenly the strength six, and they've got three attacks each. Because um, obviously I drop the banner and my From Beyond on them. And... Um, so the Acolytes will go in first and tear things up, but then typically the enemy has a lot of firepower left over and they will kill the Acolytes. Uh, but then turn three, I drop the Aberrants in. I have a one-two punch. And the Aberrants come in and generally, by turn three, after being hit by Acolytes, after being hit by Psychic Powers and all my shooting, which we'll talk about later in a minute, um, the Aberrants tend to, to finish the deal. And the enemy will struggle to kill them in one round of shooting. Struggle. Uh, so we spoke about some psychic powers. Uh, the first lot of psychic powers is in my second detachment. Okay. Which is another battalion. And it is a rusted claw battalion. Now what this attachment does very simply is it gives me some bodies. It gives me some much needed bodies bodies in the detachment so i have a patriarch i have big daddy because i want the psychic support i have a magus in here as well the magus is a familiar and she has a second relic the crouchling okay i also have 30 neophyte hybrids which gives me a nice solid uh, screen for my characters and gives me some ob obsec bodies. It's a little bit of a horde that. And with things like Acolytes and Aberrants dropping in, you'd be surprised how easily the Neophytes are staying around because of the threat saturation. And because they're Rusted Claw, what little anti-infantry is sent their way, they tend to get a plus one save against it. And I tend to pop them in cover. So typically what these guys are doing is, because all I want to be is within 18 inch range of either my, with the Magus of friendly units that I can buff them with might from beyond, or enemy units so I can start smiting them. Now, uh, so I, I don't need these guys. So these guys have got a lot of flexibility when it comes to deployment. And I tend to pop them into some cover where they can blast away with their rifles. Sit on some objectives. Be fearless. Have a 3 plus save against small arms. And be screening so that my psychers can just smite away and do a lot of mortal wounds. Now, the second part of this attachment. So that's the... That blob all comes in as one. Magus, Patriarch, 30 Neophytes. Um, second part of that attachment is two squads of Atalan Jackals. Now, both of these squads are identical. Uh, there is four regular bikers, each one with a de demo charge and a shotgun. And there is also a... Atalan Wolf Quad in there with Incinerator. Now some of you might be wondering, why do I bother with that? Because what this is, obviously, is, is two is two bomb bomb bike squads. These are two Atalan bombs. Where they drop in, they, th they throw the demo charges, and then, uh, then they die. Well, what I've found works very well is you, you drop them in, you use Lying in Wait, which is two command points, and then you use uh, extra explosives and drive-by demolitions, which is Rusted Claw. Which means you get to throw four demo charges with uh, hitting on threes and, and with plus one to wounds. So when you're going again after things like knights, which are very competitive, but any, any unit, you're often wounding it on threes or twos because your demo charges are AP minus three. They're better than battle cannons, guys. They're AP minus three with the D3 damage. Very nice. Um, but why do I bother with the, the wolf quad? Well, there's two reasons for the wolf quad. One, wounds. Wolf quad has four wounds, which means it's much, it's much better at absorbing multi-damage weapons, like D3 damage weapons. And it's there because typically if you deep strike these guys in, 
you're going to get, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get Orga or, or Specs back or Specs scanned or the equivalent where someone can have a free round of shooting at you at minus one. But um, but what? But you don't want to lose your demo charges. So this thing drops in, it eats, it, um, these guys drop in, they're minus one from if they're getting all specs scanned. The minus one again because they're Atlanta Jackals. They're minus two, and suddenly before they get to any of your demo charges, they've got to chew through a four wound model. So it's very good at eating wounds. It's often the first thing to die, but if it lives, what it does is it get it means the uh, the wolf quad's got a, a Atlanta incinerator, and what that means is it allows the unit to continue contributing after its initial drop. A unit of four bikes with shotguns blasting around isn't really a threat. Somebody really do much it might tie up some enemy units, but that's about it. But when you've got that wolf quad with the flamer, it really they can drive around. The auto, D6 automatic hitting hits, strength five AP minus one. They really can start bullying some backfield squads. So I tend to drop them down, demo charge them, and then I'll either smash them 14 inches. Uh, using the movement after the uh, drive-by demolitions into the enemy deployment zone, or I'll pop them behind some line of sight cover. And the next turn, they're going to drive out again and start flaming things and tying things up. And they are a very good harassment unit after that. Now, I have two of these, two of these squads, which account for eight command points. And I also, for the Acolyte bomb and the Aberrant bomb from the previous attachment, I keep four command points spare for them as well, each. Because three for the perfect ambush, so that's three per bomb, so that's six. And then I keep a reroll in the bank as well, in case I get a rubbish dice on the on the perfect ambush and I only move forward like one or two inches. So that's eight, four command points for each one of my bombs, and I have four bombs, which is sixteen command points. And I've spent a relic point on the relic before the beginning of the game, so that's seventeen command points already accounted for. So you can see, this is. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, armor save rerolls in this list. Not a lot, or anything like that. But I tend to find um, you don't really need it with cult. Weirdly, I very rarely use command rerolls with cult. But we'll we'll come back to that in a moment. So, the first attachment was cult of the four armed emperor. Lots of close combat things. A couple of close combat bombs. Threat saturation. A, a couple of smaller units to. Uh, to cheekily grab line breaker or to bully some uh, backfield objective units. But then we've got uh, the rusted claw attachment, which gives me some bodies. Also gives me uh, some really, really nasty uh, uh, demo charge bombs and is surprisingly tough to shift. And gives me, the, again, some more backfield harassment. Because when you think about it, guys, if my opponent's got two Acolyte squads and two Atalan Jackal squads roaming around his backfield by turn three, that's suddenly going to start really threatening whatever objective holders he's got. But does he target those smaller units? Or does he target the Aberrants coming at him, the Acolytes coming at him, the Patriarch and the 30, 30 Neophytes coming at him, smiting him and stuff? It's tough. Now, this is all stuff that begins off the board but obviously we have to have a certain amount which starts on the board as well okay so what I have on the board is my castle it's my hive cult castle so my third attachment is another battalion it's another different gene sect taking full advantage of mixing and matching gene sects here and it is a hive cult detachment. And in this detachment, we have Primus and a Jackal Alphas leading the detachment, both of which are hive cult. Uh, we have uh, then in the troop department, three squads of neophytes. Again, so that's another 30 bodies, which is we're up to about 100 bodies now in this horde, with um, two heavy stowers in each squad, two grenade launchers in each squad. Everyone else has an auto gun, including the sergeants. And each one of those squads is in a Goliath truck with twin auto cannon and heavy stubber. And then on top of that, we have two Achilles Ridge Runners, both of which with heavy mining laser, twin stubber, and flare launcher. Now, I found this to be very effective 
Very, very effective. Surprisingly tough. All the vehicles have got a six up, feel no pain. When I use prepared defenses, they all have a three plus save as well. And what I do is I take the, I use the brood coven stratagem. This is where it all links together, okay? And what I do with the, the brood coven stratagem is I give the magus in this detachment the hive, hive lord warlord trait, which is a hive cult specific one, which allows all cult, hive cult units within six inches of the magus to reroll ones to hit. So you can see this is going. So suddenly, all those trucks and those ridge runners are getting reroll ones to hit. And then I have the jackal Alphas, who is hitting on a two with reroll ones to hit as well. And then the jackal Alphas is giving uh, all those units plus one to hit against an enemy unit. So what it really allows me to do is with all those heavy stubbers and auto cannons and mining lasers and grenade launchers, it really allows me to have a from just three trucks, a couple of ridge runners, a really, really surprisingly good amount of firepower. Really good. And the second and it gives me enough on the board that I'm not really gonna risk getting table turn one. Because we've all got that six of feel no pain, which really does help, and there's guys inside and there's characters. So you do not really, you don't get table turn one. You tend to have enough to survive the first couple of turns. And then, and if it's most of the time people are playing chapter proof 2018 they say, so even if you do get table turn one, it doesn't matter. But also it gives, like I said, more bodies, more obsec and maneuverability, which is very important. Because Gene Silla Cult, they can drop in anywhere, but after that they can only move six inches. Nope, I've got trucks which can move. 12 inches, they've got guys inside, and I've got my case Ridge Runners, which can be 14 inches. The great thing about the Ridge Runners, which a lot of people underestimated, including myself, is the fact they don't degrade. And the amount of time, and they've got eight wounds. People think they've only got six, they've got eight wounds. So often, people will shoot something like a couple of LAS cannons at them, thinking that'll be enough to kill it, or cripple it and yeah they might do like five or six wounds but that thing's still alive and it's still hitting on full whack very i am more impressed more and more impressed with the ridge with, with, with the ridge runners more and more impressed now so this stuff starts on the board it starts at a in a nice defensive position it's all crowded around my um, it's all kind of around my Magus and the Jackal Alphas and what this, the job of this detachment again is to get me a victory point and it's to guarantee me first strike. Whatever it does, it has to get me first strike and it tends to do that every single time because it's got an insane, I just bully a small unit. Honestly, I tend to, uh, with this detachment, when you think about it, I've got th six heavy stubbers on the infantry, three heavy stubbers on the trucks. And six heavy stubbers, uh, no, sorry, four heavy stubbers on the ridge runners. So I've got 13 heavy stubbers. That's 39 stubber shots, most of which are hitting on threes, uh, re rolling ones. So I t that's a lot of DACA, really is. The auto cannons help to chip in, the grenade launches, the auto, um, the grenade launches, the auto cannons, the other, you know, the, the, the auto guns. And uh, I'm not I'm not against using the heavy mine lasers just to absolutely fry a couple of basic infantry to guarantee me getting that first strike. But I tend to have more than enough. The reason there's a lot of anti-infantry on this starting thing and only a couple of only a bit of anti-tank because my anti-tank is typically in my acolytes, in my bomb bikes, in my aberrants. And what the, the job of this detachment is to get first strike, but to, more importantly, to clear screening units. It's got a lot of anti-infantry potential. It's got an average of uh, 13 auto gun, you know, strength three attacks, and you know, 13, 14 strength three attacks, and six strength four attacks from each one of those infantry squads, plus another seven shots from the uh, trucks, which is another 21 shots. So you're looking at 60 shots plus 21 shots, 81 shots plus the ridge ones, which has got another um, 12 shots. So you're at, what, 83, uh, 93, and then the lasers, the mine lasers get two shots each. 
and then you've got the sniper rifle, and you could get a rapid fire edge, and it could get you could get more shots. So you've got about a hundred shots which you can just use to just clear away, clear away chaff, clear away screening units. Now, um, what I tend to do, what I do is with the other, I should say, with the other part of the brood coven stratagem, the primus who's part of the cult of the four armed emperor. Attachment gets the cult of the four armed emperor warlord trait, which gives me d3 command points back. So typically, I get about two back, which means the point for brood coven is re returned, and the point for uh, an extra relic is also returned. So I still have those two that I want to play with, and I also get a free inbuilt sort of pseudo reroll where I can roll a hit or a wound, wound roll or an armor save. That's like having an extra command point as well. Um, and then the Patriarch gets the War Crawler trait from minus one to hit. So he, he, I don't want to give up Warlord. I want him to be protected. Now, coming up to 26 minutes of this video, so I want to just, uh, and I've already sort of talked about the strategy. The castle starts on the board, clears away some screens. The first wave comes in, which tends to be the Acolytes with all, uh, the Neophytes, the Patriarch and the Magus. They come in, they just clear away whatever remaining screens are left, combined with the shooting, and start getting in amongst the enemy's uh, tougher units. Uh, the enemy tends to clear away the acolytes. The bomb bikes obviously come in and, and blow up something important. And then turn three, the aberrants come in. There's no screen now. They just start wrecking through loads of enemy stuff, and another bomb bike unit blops in. And again, it deals a huge amount of damage. And what's and my castle? And by after turn two, what's left of my castle, which typically is like a ridge runner, a couple of trucks, um, and the characters, they're still pouring on the firepower, pouring it on, um, doing loads of damage. And the psychers, after turn, typically after after turn, the the magus with the crouchling puts might from beyond on the acolytes, and then puts might from beyond. On the uh, on the aberrants as well, but the patriarch, he's got mental onslaught, he's got um, mind control, he's got massive, he's got you know he's got um, so not massive, he's got mind control and and uh, ma uh, mental onslaught. But typically, what the patriarch does and the and the both magus start doing uh, is they just start chucking out smite, 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 smite. So. The Patriarch will cast Smite first on a 5, and then the Magus with the Crouchling, which gives me plus 1 to cast, uh, will also put out Smite on a 5. And then what I get the other Magus to do, if I'm feeling like I'm not, you know, I can either do another Smite on a 6, or I can do the Psionic Blast, which is only a 5, and that gets, lets me do another, more, you know, another Mortal Wound and try and beat the enemy's leadership and maybe do D3. So, uh, and they just do that. They do that, they do that, and they're just absolutely... They're putting out about six, seven mortal wounds a turn. Because what this army... This army's very good at dealing with... What I've learnt is there are two main weaknesses to this army. It, well, its strengths are it crushes knights. It crushes a lot of good armies. out. Like, things like Imperial Guard, really, it, it crushes them. Because I get two turns of just clearing away those screens. My aberrants start getting in amongst tanks. It's brutal. Um... It's it's good against most lists. The first thing that I sh first list I struggled against, the first two lists I struggled against, were Custodes and Death Watch, and that was principally because of the Invon saves. C facing off against Death Watch with loads of Storm Shields, m so much of my shots struggle now. Then I just have my smites, and honestly, I've it's these three psychers between the smites and the psionic blasts and everything they can clear out a good part of a of a kill team you know they typically kill five or six kill team models each, uh, between them that clears out a kill team and then all the rest of the stubber fire starts piling on and you just force them to make a load of three up saves and they just die they just die so that's how you do it. A combination of just don't let them take a save and a combination of just make them overwhelm their saves. Same with uh, Custodes. 
I smite out a couple of those bikes with my psychers. Suddenly a big custody squad that was like six bikes, there's only four bikers. You start throwing in all your auto cannons. You start throwing in your mining lasers. The aberrants, the nacolites, of ah oh yeah, it, it does tear them to pieces. Um, so that's how you do it. The, the, there is one major weakness with this list, which is flyer spam. Which, uh, but after the latest FAQ has not been as much of a problem. Still good, still good, not as much of a problem. What I tend to have found with with dealing with flyers is the, the close combat stuff is a huge distraction can effects. And again, what you tend to do is you, you smite a lot of wounds off them. And then you use things like the, um, the Jackal Alphas to get that plus one to hit. And uh, don't forget, you get, you get plus one to hit with your bomb bikes as well. So they're often counteracting the, the minus one to hit of the flyers. Don't forget also the hive cult stratagem chilling efficiency. So if I feel like my close combat stuff is, if I'm already dominating the ground game and I don't feel like I need to perfect ambush in uh, another, another squad, I'll just ambush them in normally. Then uh, that gives me that frees up potentially four command points. I can use chilling efficiency. I can with the jackal alpha. I can get plus two to hit on an enemy flyer, and that tends to help counteract them. And my mining lasers can just go in there. Mining lasers go in there. They do. They do pluck flyers out of the sky. When you've got a plus two to hit, and you're rerolling ones, so it still means you tend to be hitting most flyers on threes. Obviously, elder flyers, you, you know, you're hitting on fours with the minus two. Um, but you still tend to hit most flyers on threes, you're rolling ones. Between after you've smit, smited loads of them, you you pluck you do pluck them out of the sky a little bit. Now um, there is I did say there was some flexibility in this list, and there is uh, as it, it links into the weakness, which is I sometimes find I don't have enough command points to effectively do both bike bombs. Um, so. What I've been tempted and what I'm going to be trying out is I'm going to only have the one bike bomb and I'm going to... And also another weakness is um, if an enemy has a way of getting a turn one charge on you, they can tie up a lot of your castle. Um, so what I found, what I'm, what I'm trying as an experiment is I'm going to drop one of the bomb bike squads and drop the wolf quad out of the other bomb bike squad and just have a five man bomb biker which when you, t when you take that into account when you go from two f two squads with a quad to just one five man squad without the quad you actually have 110 points left over so i need to find what i'm going to do with those 110 points i'm tempted to take a load of brood brothers huge amount of brood brothers um which I was going to stick in the Cult of the Forearmed Emperor Detachment and take a 20-man Acolyte Bomb, take a load of Brood Brothers, um, or because then I'll have more bodies, which I can use for screening, um, and or, or with those 110 points that I could save, summoning. Thinking of getting a turn one summoning going. 20 Neophytes, Summon them in, uh, conga line them back so that they're able to uh, benefit from the Jackal Alpha. Something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Some kind of summoning malarkey. Not entirely sure how it's going to work yet, but that's the plan. So, uh, or maybe simply just boosting. I do like the Achilles Ridge Runners. They are very good. Maybe taking an extra Achilles Ridge Runner or something like taking a Sanctus with the Gift from Beyond. There's a bit of flexibility, so I'd say you probably have, um, if you want to trim the bike, I'd say keep most of the list as it is if you want to use it. But trim, if you go into where you can trim points is to trim the bikes down, that gives you about 110 points to play with. That's where I'd say you find your seasoning. Season it to your own desire. However much salt and pepper you want to put on there, however much uh, parmesan, that's your 110 points to do that. So, there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. Um... This is a list that I found to do very well. Um, the only thing is I wish I had a little bit more mortal wound output. So I'm tempted with my 110 points that I'm thinking of saving. Of taking a extra magus. And just having 
uh, three Maguses and a Patriarch, which are going to be doing three Smites, or you know they're going to be doing Smites and Mental Onslaughts and Psionic Blasts. And I'm thinking of taking a Familiar on each one of those squads, so I can have a turn on each one of those Maguses. Because think about this, you can have a turn. I might do another video on this later, but you can have a Patriarch that plops down, does a Mental Onslaught. You can have a Magus with the Crouchling that plops down. Uh... Uh, a regular Magus that does a smite, a Magus with a Crouchling that does a smite still on a five, and then a last one, a Magus doing Psionic Blast. And then if you've got an extra couple of familiars in there, you can also have the Psionic Blast guy doing um, a smite as well. So you'd have a sight, uh, you'd have a Mental Onslaught, two uh, normal smites, a psionic blast, and a smite going off on a six. That's a lot of mortal wounds. That's potentially two from each smite, so that's six. Another two, uh, another two from the psionic blast, typically, so that's eight, plus whatever you get with mental onslaught, which would be fair, which typically I tend to find does about two or three mortal wounds. So, you, but if obviously, you know, it's enough to clear out a lot of enemies. Good bit of mortal wound spam that other armies don't really have the power to pull that off so you know a lot of uh, armies struggle to get off two or three smites unless you're obviously thousand suns or great knights but they're baby smites you know think about that anyway guys season how you will i hope you've enjoyed this video please put lots of comments down below and of course i'll see you guys next time